could be more at home on the range than the Range Rider. With his thrilling adventures of the great outdoors, his exciting experiences rivaling those of Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, Buffalo Bill, and other pioneers of this wonderful country of ours. And Dick West, all-American boy. Anyway. Shut up, you. We don't have anything of value, fellas. Probably mistaken identity. You think we know who you are, Mr. Range Rider, and you ain't wanted in this territory. Mind telling us why? We aren't telling you nothing. Just turn your horse around and get going. That's what I call a nice, warm welcome. Too warm, if you ask me. Yeah. Let's go find out what it's all about. I tried to stop him. Fred got killed. I was lucky to get away. That horse has got dried mud all over his legs. The same kind of mud that guy rode through when he got away. Morning. You own this place? That depends. What's on your mind? Who owns this horse with all the mud on him? I have the slightest idea. Some stranger left the nag here to be shot. Well, can you give us a description of him? I'll know him when he gets back. Not very anxious to help. What do we do now? Well, that horse belongs to somebody around here. Let's go have a look. at the Oak Creek Relay Station, Tim. The express wagon will drop them off there. That's mighty good news, Miss Jean. What about the wire? You check on that, Larry? It left Jenkins Outpost this morning. Should be in camp late this afternoon. Miss Snyder? That's right. We're supposed to report to you. I'm the range rider, and this is my sidekick, Dick West. I'm certainly glad you're here. Meet Tim Riley, my right-hand man. Tim? And Larry ran my construction foreman. Hello, Larry. The range rider and Dick are troubleshooters for the telegraph company. Good. We need all the help we can get. Well, that's why we're here. According to reports received at Cheyenne, Miss Snyder, you've been stringing wire at the rate of five miles a day. That is, up until the last couple of weeks, when a series of accidents and delays have cut your progress down to less than a mile every 24 hours. Is that right? We've been working day and night, but we're still a little over seven miles from Slade's Crossing. It's less than three days to complete our contract. If we fail, we automatically lose our contract to continue the line into California. Well, whoever's trying to stop you knew that we were coming here. We were ambushed by two masked men and warned to leave this part of the country. 
You fellas seem hard to convince. Well, sometimes. Were you able to identify the men that held you up? No, one of them got away. But in getting away, he ran his horse through some gray mud. We located a horse with gray mud all over him over at the blacksmith shop. He's still there. If only the fellow that runs the place wouldn't give us any information. Tim, go with him and take a look at the horse. Maybe you can identify it. Larry and I will join you after I lock up the office. We're moving out to camp until the line is finished. What happened to that horse all covered with mud that was here a little while ago? Some guy came and got him. Who was he, Slade, do you know? No, some stranger I've never seen before. I think you're lying, Slade. I want to have a look around. Oh, no, you don't, mister. Beat it. Leave the gun alone, Jake. Thanks for helping us out. Forget it. Where's that horse you mentioned? Oh, he's gone. That's what started the fight. My partner wanted to look around and he dumped him. I always thought Slade was on the up and up, but you can never tell. Gene, I'll meet you and Tim out at the relay station in an hour and help with the insulators. In the meantime, I'm going to ride out to the mill at Deer Creek and see if they're cutting any more poles for us. See you all later. Miss Snyder, who received the message that Dickie and I were coming to Slade's Crossing? Hank Colder, our regular operator, was. Do you think he'd tell anyone? Well, I doubt it. I doubt it very much. Well, by golly, somebody talked out of turn. You think any of the workmen could have overheard the message? Well, it's possible. A lot of them know the Morse code. Can you specifically think of anyone who'd want to stop your work here? I wouldn't put it past the foreman, Larry Rand. Tim, you have no right to talk like that. Since Dad was killed, he's been working night and day for us. It's that night work that bothers me, Miss Jean. He spends too much time away from camp. Don't worry, Tim. We'll find out whether he's on the level or not. This Steve Gray that has the ranch just south of here, is he the same man that bid against you for the construction contract? He certainly is. Once more, I'm convinced he's behind our troubles, but I can't prove it. All I can say is I hope no one has told Gray about that load of supplies that Jenkins is sending over to us today. Tim's right. If anything happens to that, we might as well give up. Well, don't worry about the supplies. Dickie and I will go out and escort that wagon to camp. About time you got here. Sorry, Mr. Gray, I had to have some excuse for leaving. Why didn't you let Jake plug the range rider when he had the chance? Yeah, why'd you shoot the gun out of my hand? Oh, you couldn't see and you know it. Besides, how, what could I do with a girl standing right next to me? All right, all right, let's cut out arguing. There's too much money involved in taking over the Snyder girl's contract to let anything or anybody stand in our way. Besides, right now, we got another little matter to take care of. Jake, there's a load of telegraph wire on the way over to the camp from Jenkins' outpost. There's just the driver and the guard with it. You know what to do. Come on, Hal, we got work to do. Get 
house for that wagon. Take charge of these supplies. Burn them and dump them over the first cliff you come to. Be all right. Dick, get my horse and pick up that other guard. Then meet us on the way back to camp. Right. You ran into some more trouble. That's right. I'll tell you all about it as soon as we get this man's shoulder fixed up. Start unloading to him. So it was Jake Slade and Hal Edwards that tried to hold up the supply wagon. That's right, Miss Snyder. But what we want to know is who tipped them off. Well, Larry made all the arrangements. No one knew about them but us. What about Jenkins' freight office? Think someone there could have done it? Could be, but I doubt it. Well, at least we have the insulators and the wire to string on them. Just so we don't run out of poles again. They weren't any more available at Deer Creek Mill. They just blew up a wagon load of poles and wire. There goes our last chance. We're through. Maybe not. What do you mean, maybe not? We can't possibly make it within the time limit now. Gene, does your contract stipulate a certain number of poles of the mile? No, but... And we'll salvage every bit of wire that we can find. We'll put on anything that's above the ground, use it till it falls apart. It might work at that. We can at least try. I'll telegraph Cheyenne and ask John Larson for an extension. He's an old friend of Dad's, and I know he'll help if he can. Tim, you and Dick will all need tonight on guard duty. We don't want anything else to happen, right? Right. I'll take the first shift if you well, want I'm, to. I'm not tired. Well, okay. You go ahead, and I'll relieve you in four hours. paying you to sabotage his company. It was an accident. I can explain everything. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Now get out of here.
like your hunch was right, Tim. I just caught Larry rolling a couple spools of wire off a cliff. Why, that dirty, sneaky polecat. Can we recover any of it? Afraid not, Chief. I guess our only chance is that extension from Mr. Larson. Let's check with Hank and see if he's heard anything. Anything important, Hank? Just the operator at Laramie testing the line. Anything from Cheyenne? Not a thing. I'll take over the key a while. You go help the boys. All right. Hank's lying. I read the last two words of that message, and it wasn't from the operator in Laramie. Maybe it was from Larson. Let's get our horses and follow him. Tim, you stay here and keep things going. <laughs> Let me have that paper you just showed to Larry and Steve Gray. I don't know what you're talking about. What piece of paper? This one right here. Hey, partner, it's a note from Cheyenne. It says, John Larson will arrive at Slade Crossing this afternoon on the Overland States to arrange for extension of Snyder contract. All right, get off your horse. What are you going to do with me? Just ask you a couple questions. Now, where were Larry and Gray going? I don't know. All right, I'll ask you again. Where were they going? All I did was deliver a message. Answer my question. All right, I'll tell you. They went after some more men to stop the coach and get rid of Larson. All right, tie him up, Dick. I'll get word to Gene to get some more help. I'll be right back. got to intercept that stagecoach. Stay down out of the way.
Don't you worry about the extension, Miss Snyder. I'll give you plenty of time to finish the job. Thank you, Mr. Larson. What I want to know is how did you send that message to me about Larson? That's our new secret invention. Sure, partner. All right. Dickie, get me a canteen full of water. Sure. Let's see this. Dickie, pour the water on the base of that guy wire. Give me a good contact. Ha, 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 ha.